Hello, today we're going to be looking at how to solve a triple integral, uh, which you can see here. This is the one we'll be working on. Uh, the type we're looking at is trigonometric. Basically it means we're dealing with sine cos tan. Uh, as you can see, we've got cos in the uh, equation here. So, make sure you're familiar with your integrals and differentials for your sine cos tan, stuff like that. Um, so triple integral means we are integrating with respect to uh, three different variables. Here we've got z, or z for you Americans, <laughs> uh, z, y, and x. Um, it looks very complicated, but um, it's, it's quite a simple process really. Just uh, can be quite a long one. So bear with me. So the first step to do is the first integral. So the first thing we do is integrate with respect to z. So we work our way outwards. So we first are concerned with this bit here. We ignore this and we ignore this. Okay, now integrating cos of z over x with respect to z means that the uh, the x value becomes just a bit like a number, like a coefficient. Uh, so we don't need to worry about the x value, and uh, well, I'll show you what happens. So as we know, cos integrates to sine. Now, if we have cos of a z and we're integrating with respect to z then that becomes sine of a z over a plus a constant now what if this a becomes 1 over x well then quite simply we have sine of 1 over x and we bring the x up. Therefore, this becomes and we put the limits in from x, y, and 0. And I apologize for having written this by here. Uh, obviously, we have dy and dx. Now, if we stick these in, we get x sine of z becomes xy the x is cancel so we have y minus well naught so that becomes naught because it's obviously <laughs> sine of uh, naught over x is naught anything multiplied by naught becomes naught itself So, the first step's done, it's complete. Now we need to worry about integrating x sine y with respect to y. Now this is easier than it looks. Once again, we're not integrating with respect to x, so that becomes almost like a coefficient term. So we can disregard the x and worry about sine y. And we know that sine y integrates to minus cos of y. between pi over 2 and x. So we're going to put the values in.
So we have minus x cos of pi over 2. Now, to make sure we get the correct value, we'll input into a calculator. And we see that cos of pi over 2 is equal to 0. Minus, minus, as well becomes plus, x cos x dx. So this bit becomes zero, and if with x cos x dx. Now this leaves us with a slightly more difficult situation here, because we're integrating with respect to x, and we have one, two x uh, terms here. So we're going to integrate by parts. Okay, when we're integrating by parts, we want to let uh, one part of this be equal to u, and another part be equal to dv. So, if we quickly let u equal x, and we let dv equal cos of x, and we let u be x, because then du becomes 1. It's a little trick. Then we can continue to rewrite this in the integration by parts form, which is uv minus the integral of v du. So u is x, v is cos of x, and the integral of cos of x is, of course, sine of x minus the integral of v du. Now we know that v is sine of x by integrating dv, obviously, and du, well, that becomes dx. So quite simply, being neat and putting the limits in. We are then able to, uh, to see that pi over 2 by sine of pi over 2 minus 0 minus the integral of sine which is of course minus a cos so if we have the integral of sine being minus cos and a minus sign we can have plus cos between these two values here. Simply stick the values in and we have an answer pi over 2 minus 1. I hope that was able to help you.